So by now most people will be quite familiar with the Honeycomb Aeronautical Flight Control System. That's the yoke I have installed in my cockpit at the moment. Indeed many people will now have been able to acquire one of these. I had a very early one you will recall and I've done a review video, a couple of review videos. But for the purposes of the present discussion I've also made a video specifically about one feature of this yoke that was unexpected and which has caused a fair bit of consternation among the purchasing public <laughs> and that is that this yoke appears to have dead zones in each of the pitch and the roll axes. Now this is something that's contradicted by the marketing literature and to the extent that there's been any official response to these claims from Honeycomb Aeronautical that response has been to essentially deny the existence of dead zones but they are there, they are measurable and in the absence of any hard information we can only speculate about what this means and speculate I did in my previous video about the dead zones for this yoke but I've done some more thinking and I've done some more experiments and I'm fairly convinced I know what's going on now and I'm also fairly convinced it's not a problem I should say that in the time since I posted that previous video I was actually contacted by the marketing manager of Honeycomb Aeronautical who wanted to have some conversations about diagnosing the dead zones in the yolk. Now that turned out to be very helpful because he gave me a missing part of the jigsaw if you like or, or indeed a tool that was going to help me complete the jigsaw and that is he told me about a hidden feature of this yoke, a feature which hasn't been made public which is how to recalibrate it and I'm talking about recalibrate it inside the box rather than in your flight sim or in windows. So what that does essentially is it puts the yoke into a calibration mode, invites you then to exercise it to its full extent and so some sub program in the firmware is, is actually then reading the actual limit values and the center positions of the yoke hardware and recording those. Now I'm not going to tell you how to do that because Honeycomb has asked me not to and I think that's because there's great potential for messing up your yoke if you do it wrong and it is a bit fiddly and it's worth saying you shouldn't have to do it. This is pretty much a once only shot that happens in the factory and there should be no reason for you to recalibrate the yoke. But what that's done is it's given me a tool to just play around and do some more experiments and I've pretty much figured out to my own satisfaction what's going on here. So maybe I'll just tell you the steps that I went through in reformulating my ideas about the dead zones and you should see the logic unfold as we go. First thing I did was I decided I was going to measure precisely as I could the extent of the dead zones and I did that by filming the yoke in translation while at the same time recording the output values and then I was able to map you know, the angle of displacement of the yoke to each data value and I did the same thing in the pitch which is not an angle but a linear displacement and in doing that I pretty much convinced myself that the roll dead zone was about four and a half degrees wide and in pitch the dead zone I measured was something around one and a half centimeters so that's the first thing I did. Now then something occurred to me which was that now that I have the facility to recalibrate the physical extent and the center point of the yoke, I could actually try moving the center point if I were to calibrate the yoke in a kind of crooked way it would move that center point away from the center point of the mechanism. So I did that by going through the calibration and wherever I needed to mark the center point I hold the yoke here as my center point. Now it's very sloppy trying to do that. So I actually used something to prop it up. Uh, I didn't actually use this but this is um, this will illustrate it. So that gives me a hard center point. Now I went through the calibration with this as the center and then this is the fully left and fully right positions. And when I did that what I discovered was there was no longer a dead zone here in the roll axis but there was a dead zone out here. Now interestingly enough that dead zone didn't seem to be as big as it was when I measured my initial dead zone. So initially I thought the smaller dead zone was something to do with that asymmetry. But thinking about it a bit more I pretty much 
realised what I think is going on. Now I've owned a bunch of flight yokes over the years, including, let's see, the SciTech Pro Flight yoke, the SciTech Pro Flight Cessna yoke, the CH Eclipse yoke, the Elite yoke, the Yoko yoke, and the Honeycomb Aeronautical yoke. Not sure if I missed any out there. Now all of those yokes have something in common. And I'll try and illustrate that with this yoke. This is the Elite yoke. This is a bit of a monster. But this is, was in its day and to some extent still is considered a, a high-end yoke. Uh, it's got a very precise mechanism, but it is a mechanism. It doesn't have any artificial detente in the center, but that creates a problem. And that is that there's a bit of slop around the centering of this yoke in both pitch and roll. Now it may be that you have the CH flight yoke or the CH Eclipse yoke and one striking feature of that yoke is that slop in the pitch mechanism in particular is quite striking and you know this is from memory actually referred to in the description of the CH yoke as a feature which is that the which I think is going a little bit far honestly but you know they make a feature out of the fact that the yoke doesn't center perfectly in pitch and they say that's a realism item, whereas really it just reflects the difficulties of creating a mechanism that returns the yoke precisely to the centre with 100% reliability. Now the CH yokes are of course low end in, in terms of price. The Elite yoke is not low end, it's by today's standards, you know, it's getting a bit long in the tooth, but it's by no means cheap. I think that yoke was maybe five or six hundred pounds new, but it comes with its own driver programme and that driver programme has just as you have in your flight sims a specific facility for setting a, a null zone in the middle and what that does is it allows you to set an artificial center point that compensates for that slight irregularity in the return to center and so the common factor in all of these devices is there's going to be a degree of imprecision in the return to center unless you design in there some artificial very precise kind of center locking mechanism like the horrible one in the SciTech yokes. So in the absence of that, the mechanism inside of this yoke, just like every other yoke, is going to have a, some degree of imprecision around the center. And I'm pretty convinced that's the explanation for what's going on. When you run the hardware calibration routine on this, you mark the center point twice. So you mark the rightmost point, you mark the center point, leftmost, center. What I suspect it's doing there is it's capturing potentially two different values for that center point and it's creating a dead spot deliberately between those center values. Um, now that's just giving me another idea which I haven't tried out yet. Um, <laughs> now it could be that just by happenstance when you run that calibration routine it re returns to exactly the same physical center point on both occasions and if that happened you would have a, a zero null zone. Now there is a way we can test that. You will remember that when I calibrated my yoke off center I discovered that the null zone out here appeared to be smaller and I think the reason for that is when I did that I created a hard center that I could return to well if not exactly pretty closely I didn't do it quite like this, I actually had uh, something much more robust than this. And so I suspect that I was closer to capturing the same, precisely the same two centre values each time I measured the centre point. So if I were to try and repeat that exercise, but calibrate the yoke in the regular centre position, the only difference being if I put a hard buffer there, which should allow me to return precisely to the centre, or at least more precisely, I should be able to calibrate this yoke with a smaller dead zone. Now that's not necessarily a good idea because that dead zone as we are beginning to recognize has a purpose but it doesn't stop me trying that out and it will be interesting as a verification of what's going on. So I just had a go at that and sure enough you can virtually eliminate that dead zone if you calibrate it against a hard stop. But of course a lot of thoughts gone into this and there's probably a couple of good reasons why you don't want to do that. First of all, you may well 
find that your yoke at the when you leave it centered has some jitter in it in the value that's being reported and of course the other reason is the fact that it doesn't return to center precisely every time means that it's going to be very hard to trim the aircraft because as soon as you touch the yoke you potentially go out of trim so that's the purpose of having a, a null zone of any sort and that's about it so you know if you think about this logically when this yoke is calibrated at the factory or if you know the tap dance uh, to go through to recalibrate it essentially it's doing the most logical thing which is to calibrate that return to center position to the precision of the mechanism that you have within your particular box and building a return to center that matches that and given that every box is probably going to vary slightly in that it's an adaptive algorithm and the bottom line is if you didn't do that you would need to do that artificially by setting a null zone in your flight sim software anyway so at the end of the day this is not a problem it's not a flaw it's not a bug in the yoke i mean it would be nice if they would come out and explain exactly what that is but i'm pretty sure that that's what it is and it's not a problem so maybe you found this helpful and hopefully it's going to set people's minds at ease that there's nothing wrong with this yoke after all